Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Uh, this is a very, very famous orthopedic surgeon, and we're so happy to have him on our show now with all this terrible stuff going on. So, uh, Dr. Badia, we're, um, well, let me just tell you um, ex- exactly how this is going. We, your first name is Alejandro Badia. You're an Correct. MD and you're an orthopedic surgeon, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. And, of course, it's a trying time for everybody, but especially for doctors. And I'm so glad that you're taking the time. I know that you're probably doing some emergency work right now, aren't you? You're not doing typical uh, surgeries for orthopedic that's correct, uh, but that's uh, that's actually a challenge in and of itself because the facility is closing, and I'm uh, outside the hospital system. I do everything in an ambulatory center, so it's been particularly challenging with the state regulations. Right, I understand that. So, are you wearing a mask, and and are you protecting yourself? Yes, I am. I, I was tested. I was lecturing in Australia uh, the day after I came back. I was. Uh, tested for COVID-19, uh, negative, and uh, we are really providing care mostly by telemedicine now yes. uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> exactly. And what were you doing in uh, Australia? I was lecturing at the uh, Asian Pacific Hand Surgery Congress. So basically that entire side of the world, um, including obviously uh, Australia, is uh, a hand surgery congress. And the last day of it was actually canceled because of the pandemic. So I managed to get back just in time. Wow. So your specialty in, ortho, in orthopedic surgery, uh, hand, and tell, tell us exactly what you, why you decided to do this, first of all, of medical school, and then what is your specialty? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, certainly there are certain, several factors. I'm a, I'm a hand and upper limb surgeon means that I do hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Mm. Uh, and and I, I chose that because I like the variety of the pathology and what I was exposed to during my training at NYU a Medical Center and Bellevue Hospital. I largely chose hand surgery because my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, originally from Valencia, Spain, was afflicted with very severe rheumatoid arthritis. And I was very close with her. We were immigrant family. I had come from Cuba. My, my dad's an engineer, had to work in a warehouse, typical immigrant story uh, in the 60s. And she, um, you know, sort of was with me during daytime. And uh, somewhere in the back of my mind, I wanted to help her, I guess. And we went Aww. to see a hand surgeon when I was eight years old in uh, at Columbia. Oh, oh, my yeah. God, that's a beautiful <laughs> story. And, you know, it's funny, I do interview a lot of physicians and Many of them do have stories like this that they they knew they were going to do it or somebody influenced them. But that's so nice of you. I'll just tell you one thing. I I lived in Miami and in 1959 when the Cuban refugees came in and there were many Uh doctors and lawyers. And they were living four in an efficiency apartment. They did get $100 a month, I guess, each one. And, And so it was a hard time. But, you know, they really showed their spirit. And now Southwest A Street and that whole, it's flourishing because of them. Well, sure. Well, you know, our mayor, our county mayor, uh, you know, they said, I mean, this is very much a Latino town, uh, but it's an interesting mix. You know, now we have every other South American uh, country. We have a lot. We have a, a huge, uh, we've had a huge uh, Jewish population for many years. And now we have Russians, we have Europeans from Italy and France, Spain. So, so it's a pretty diverse place. Right. And now getting back to your specialty, I guess you see a lot of tennis players and people. I just had a cousin who had to have, she was quite a champion in the United States, and boy, upper shoulder. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, ironic that you asked me because I, I happen to be have a particular interest in tennis injuries of the upper limb. In fact, uh, a, a major book, a first comprehensive book on tennis medicine came out. Uh, about a year and a half ago, and I wrote the I wrote the uh, the, the chapter on hand and wrist injuries. So, no kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. And so it's um, I mean, there's chapters on shoulder, and there's I mean, there's chapters on nutrition, uh, on on uh, on a lot of things. But but yeah, the the upper limb in, in a lot of different sports, golf, uh, is affected. So it's it's you know, people ask me, what do you do as a hand surgeon? They they, they really can't fathom it. 
And, and, you know, if I'm in South Beach, people will say, well, what do you do to make the hand look better? I go, no, 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 it's not a cosmetic. <laughs> you know, I go, right. I say, yeah, I really, I, right away I say, uh, you know, you want to call me when you put your hand in a circular saw working in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get it, yeah. Right, or the garbage disposal, right? <laughs> or whatever, the blender. I mean, I, I have every story. Oh, I've, 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 I've had hand bites, uh, bites of uh, animal bites from almost every species you can think of. <laughs> oh, my heavens. I'm sure yeah. that's true. But let's just go through this. So now uh, we know people can prevent, of course, if they don't have rheumatoid arthritis or something, they have to just be careful with their limbs. Do you prescribe certain exercises that people should do to keep their limbs strong? Oh, certainly. But, but, you know, let's understand that the nature of specialization is I am not by any means a therapist. I mean, these folks go to school for a long time. Uh, in fact, my ex-wife is a, is a physical therapist from Venezuela, so I can tell you her, her fund of knowledge in terms of exercise is much more than mine. But exercise is obviously a key, um, especially now while everybody's sort of closed in. It's important. Uh, and specifically for the upper limb, they tend to be occupational therapists, and there is something called the CHT, Certified Hand Therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, you know, there's many excellent ones in uh, in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. So, uh, but there's not many of them. It's just like hand surgeons, it's a it's a real specialty. Right. So the nice thing is that you um you're doing something that is is sounds like it's unique. There aren't many people doing this, and what would you um, what would you suggest when people have a problem? Do they they can call you and then you will give them, I'm sure, a uh, an, an interview, see what they do, and I'm going to give them your phone number right now because you have a you have actually very wonderful people. We've talked with them and you have lots of coordinators. I think a, a doctor really has to have good office staff to function, don't you think? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh and, but I'll tell you, nowadays we, we, we rely a lot on the digital. I mean, at least most of the, uh, the folks, even the older folks I know, uh, you know, will use the Internet. And so, so, so drbadia.com is really the best way uh, to reach me because, uh, you know, the, the girls on the office phone, you don't often get tied up. So if, if people can, you know, can preferentially go to the Internet, it's really a lot better to make an appointment. And if it's doctor, is it D R or D O C T R? Is it Doctor uh, yeah. D R B. Okay. A D I uh, yes D R B as in boy A D as in David I A Badia. Dot com. That's okay, right, right? Uh, and that's how that's they right. can get to you, and they will have um, I'm sure qu many many questions. But you sound like you know just I can tell without even meeting you that. You're very compassionate. You're very interesting. And <laughs> because you. I'll tell you what happens when you've had a great grandmother, a great family, it rubs off. It really does. And uh, when yeah, you're with no patients, question. yeah, you're, you sound like you're very compassionate, which unfortunately some doctors who are really smart and very um, organized, they're still not patient oriented. And it sounds like you are. Well, you know, yes, I agree, but I, I, I'd like to add a caveat to that. Uh, the okay. problem is, and I'm writing a book about this, so uh, oh. this will be the first plug ever uh, on it, to be honest. Uh, because what's happening is we're, healthcare, U.S. healthcare is under incredible uh, pressure. And, you know, we're, we're now called providers, which we absolutely hate. That is, a, yep. that is an insurance term for us. And I understand, you know, the, the, the business aspect of medicine, but... But, you know, we're doctors, we're physicians. Um, there are other people who, are, you know, are providers. There's therapists, there's technicians. All of these people provide care. And the problem is that the stresses of, of, of complying with the, the regulations, the rules, the, 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 the now everything's on a computer. Um, physicians really, you know, I, I can't speak for all of them, but, but most of us really hate it. And, and if and, you know, when you're in the surgeon's lounge at, at a hospital, which, which I don't do anymore, but back then, even back then, the, we weren't talking about interesting cases anymore. It was mm -hmm. really talking about the challenges. And that, that's why I'm writing a book called Healthcare from the Trenches. Because Is that the title? Yeah. I'll yeah, have to review your book. Trenches, uh, okay. Yeah, it, basically, it's an, it's an insider account of the, um, the, the 
uh, challenges and obstacles uh, facing providers, in quotes, providers and patients, because it's difficult for patients to access care, which is why I, I which is why I founded the Ortho Now concept, which is really an orthopedic walk-in center. Oh, right. I see that. Ortho Now yeah. D- Doral. So you are located in Doral? Well, that's the, uh, the headquarters is there. We, we, um, we're going to be, we're, we're trying to go national. We're looking for a um, strategic investor or, or a uh, partner. We had a, an interesting talk yesterday with another colleague of mine who's thinking the same thing and has uh, a similar but different concept. Ours is brick and mortar. It's actual little, like little urgent care centers that people go to. Oh. With expertise. The problem is you go to one of these general urgent cares and they, the doctor's doing the best they can. Yeah. But they don't know orthopedics. It's like you coming to me for your eye. I mean, I'm an right. MD, I, uh, but, you know, so, so this is the problem. And orthopedics is not a small niche, right? I bet for your, for your, for your, uh, for your uh, audience, this, these, it's, it's not just emergencies. People have no. back pain. They have knee pain, shoulder pain. And all of these things can be better assessed at a place like that. And, and now with this, you know, this pandemic, the, the challenge is keeping these people out of the hospital because it's a dangerous environment. Yes, it's a great idea. Is this something that yeah. you've um, con- has conceptualized? Oh, no, no. Ortho now in Dura- the, the flagship location, Doral's been open 10 years. Um, but it's, um, it, it's been a lot of challenges. We've gotten, uh, unfortunately, not a lot of community support. I mean, literally from, from the municipalities to the to the, the big employers, to the insurance companies. I mean, every time we speak to them individually, they, they really like the idea, but, you know, that doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> so the patient volume has been has, has really not been what it should be. Um, you know, so Doctor, now we do have an ortho, uh, it's called Ortho Now Live. As a, you can go to the website, orthonowlive.com. Okay. And at orthonowlive.com, you can... Um, make an appointment, a virtual appointment, to speak to an orthopedic clinician uh, over your, you know, over your smartphone or your, uh, or your computer. Wow, that's fantastic. And I will tell you, in my opinion, though, I happen to be a gerontologist, and I've been in this business, I've been in the healthcare business and the publishing and marketing business for a long time, and I think wow. what's happened as horrible as the virus, the coronavirus virus is, it's going to change the way people think. I think you may be just at the right time, the right place now, because people realize that they need to be able to talk to someone, be able to go to a small place. I think this, even though I think the virus is horrible, I think this may be wonderful for you. And I'd love to talk to you about this and see how I can help you, because I believe that this is uh, the way people are going to start to want to live. What do you think? Well, Oh, absolutely! I'd I'd love to uh, send you uh, a couple articles that just came out in the, in the national press. Okay. Uh, I was interviewed about this. Um, I I think many of us, and I, I completely agree with you. Think this is a complete reset for the world in many things. Yes. But certainly in healthcare. Certainly yes. Certainly in healthcare. So yes, uh, uh, telehealth will now be. I mean, before this, we couldn't get patients to use telehealth, and we said, look, if we're going to explain your MRI findings to you and discuss a plan at that point i don't you know we don't need to physically examine you you've already had the study we've touched you we've examined you now we're going to look at this diagnostic study and we're going to make a decision you we can do that like this like just like you and i are talking now but but with the added benefit of being able to see the person see the physician see their expression uh, uh, empathize all of these things that are important in the in the doctor patient relationship and we can do it virtually uh, there's no yes. reason in this day and age why we can't. Yep. Uh huh. And you've seen what's happened with Zoom, of course. You know they're having all their meetings on Zoom. This is a wonderful oh, thing. We, and yeah, I, yeah. I, We've been you, well, our, our executive team has been using Zoom, uh, Zoom for years, and I've been using Zoom Health for five years, but not at Ortho Now, at my oh. private practice because my private practice is about a third international. So a lot of patients before they get on a plane from say Barbados. Or, or Panama, or they, um, I'm able to virtually, you know, examine them remotely, look at their studies, and and answer their questions. You know, but Dr. Badia, that's great, and you can hear the music. It means that we've finished our interview. But (laughs) I'd like to talk to you personally. I will get back to you and.
let's see what we can do. But thank you so much, and good luck, and, and just stay safe, okay? And good, everything you're doing sounds wonderful. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you so much. Yes. Goodbye, Dr. Padilla. Bye.